And joining me live now is the Minister for Veterans Affairs, Darren Chester, who will lead the consultation process ahead of the Royal Commission. Minister, thanks so much for your time. Uh, talk us through how this will work in terms of your consultation. How are you going to go about it ahead of the Royal Commission finally getting up and, and running mid-year? Well, well, thanks, Kieran. And first and foremost, this is an opportunity for us to unite our veterans community. Uh, it's an opportunity for us to move forward with a great deal of hope and optimism that we can work together on these very real challenges. This should be an issue which is above party politics. I've always tried to treat it that way. And I'm very hopeful that we continue to work in a constructive manner across the political chamber, but also across the ex-service organisations and obviously with individual veterans and their families. My role going forward now in the next four or five weeks is to uh, work with the community and consult with them on the terms of reference for the Royal Commission. Uh, that work's already started. I've had some preliminary conversations today uh, with the uh, commissioners here in, in, in terms of the Canberra roles. Uh, I've spoken to them this morning. I've also spoken with the national president of the RSL. And I've had the chance to speak to a couple of the mothers, a couple of grieving mothers who I've known uh, throughout the last few years for for their work in advocating on behalf of, of the family. So that informal work has started, but there'll be more structured engagement over the coming weeks as we get out there and have face-to-face uh, -face, uh, round tables, but also virtual meetings uh, where we work through these, these terms of reference and, and make sure that the uh, direction that we're looking to take is, is shaped by the actual lived experiences of the families, the veterans and the serving men and women. And what was the reaction from those mothers when you spoke to them? Well, they were very, uh, very positive, uh, very uh, thankful for the fact that their voices are being heard. I mean, I've worked constructively with many families in my three years in this job, and uh, there are many people who are supportive of the ongoing National Commissioner role. And I, I think, uh, you know, in a moment of personal reflection, I'd have to suggest that I didn't quite understand at the outset how much of a, a healing experience they're hoping to achieve from a Royal Commission. They're looking to had that opportunity to tell their stories in you know, either a private or a public manner, depending on their circumstances. And that, to them, will be an important part of, of moving forward. Of course, it never brings their child back. It, it doesn't really uh, overcome their grief, but they are uh, you know, determined, passionate people who want to make a difference, who want to make sure that no other family experiences the same grief they've experienced. And what I've learnt too, Kieran, is throughout this time as Minister, the, the things that unite us are far greater than things that divide us. I know it's an old saying, but it's important to remember this. There are so many people working every day right now to try and support our veterans, support their families, support our serving men and women. I've no doubt that the, uh, the services, the, the structures that are in place right now through the Department of Veterans Affairs and through the RSL and Soldier On and other organisations, I've no doubt that those structures and, and services are saving lives today. We need to keep doing that. But we also need to recognise that too many young people in particular are taking their own lives and we need to uh, get you to the bottom of it. spoke about the personal reflection. Forward. Yeah, and on that personal reflection, I'm just wondering, did you, do you also think at times that maybe the government should have just listened to the likes of Julianne Finney and, and, and others who have said... Well, she, in her statement today, she says, I welcome the Prime Minister's announcement that a Royal Commission has finally been called. Today is a long time coming for veterans and their families. Do you, do you also reflect on that and think, well, maybe you should have just moved on this quicker? Oh, look, Kieran, absolutely. I, I reflect on my role as a member of parliament, as a local member and a minister, you know, on a regular basis. And there were many people who were uh, consulted with in the lead up to the National Commission legislation. Uh, there were many people who were strongly supportive of it. The RSL supported it, Legacy supported it. Uh, key uh, mental health organisations around the country thought it was a good policy direction as well. In fact, we still believe it's a good policy direction. We're going to continue with that. But I recognise now for, for many of the families we were talking about, Kieran, that they want the Royal Commission first to begin that healing process. They're not against the National Commissioner. They have more of a view that they want the Royal Commission first. So that's where we are at mm. today. I think the announcement by the Prime Minister uh, it was an important announcement. The Prime Minister himself well, how do has they, never ruled just out Just explain how will they work together. How do, they, how do those two things work together, the Royal Commission and the standing National Commissioner? I know you, you, you mentioned that to me, um, I think, several weeks ago, that this was a possibility and then now this has happened. How will the two of them work together, the Royal Commission and then the ongoing National Commissioner into veteran suicides? 
Well, firstly, what I'd say, Kieran, is part of my consultation over the next uh, few weeks will involve a conversation with the veteran community about that particular point as well. Uh, but the way the Prime Minister described it today, I think, was uh, very apt in that the Royal Commissioner would have all those powers we expect of a Royal Commissioner to look at those retrospective issues, to look at uh, suicide uh, attempts as well as uh, completed suicides and have give families a chance to uh, tell their stories. But the National Commissioner will then have that prospective view, that, that longer term view, and also be ready to shape and, and put in place uh, recommendations as they come forward. As the Prime Minister indicated today, the, the Royal Commission itself could take you know, up to 18 months, perhaps even longer. So there'll be some recommendations and findings I would expect along the way that uh, will require some action. And there's a, an opportunity, again, for the National Commission to be involved. And the point I would also make, Kieran, is the work we're doing mustn't stop. The work, the reform work we're doing now, the work DVA is doing, the ex-service community is doing, families are doing, that work mustn't stop. It's too important to stop. We've got to keep doing that work but then have our eyes open to the fact there might be new policy directions we need to take, and that's where I think the Royal Commission can do some good work for us. With Peter Dutton's announcement that uh, the meritorious unit citations would be retained by those who served in the Special Operations Task Group in Afghanistan, is, is that effectively pulling rank on the CDF and saying it was unfair, uh, the, adopting that rec recommendation out of the Brereton report? No, I don't think so, Kieran. It's, I know it's, we're tempted in, in public life, in the media and in political life, to try and uh, draw conclusions and to try and find division where it's not really there. I mean, the CDF is an outstanding Australian. He's done an enormous amount of work in the Defence Force and I respect his opinions enormously. But on this particular issue in terms of meritorious unit citation, I, I agree with uh, Minister Dutton that no further good would come from taking the citation away from people who've done nothing wrong. No good could come of that. And so I think the balance is right here, that if you are, in fact, uh, found guilty of serious offences or uh, if you're discharged in a, in a way that uh, doesn't reflect on your military service, that you, are, you have not served well, then you would be su subject to having that citation removed from you. But for those who've served with distinction, uh, having the opportunity to continue to, to wear that meritorious unit citation, I think, is appropriate. It, this is not an easy issue, uh, Kieran. It's, it's one that I know has caused a great deal of angst among our serving men and women and amongst the veterans I've spoken to at, at many roundtables in recent uh, weeks, it's an issue that's been yeah. raised with me. So, look, I think Minister Dutton has it right, uh, but at the same time, I respect enormously the service of the Chief of Defence Force. And uh, before you go, just if you can recap for those watching who want to make some contribution, provide some feedback, uh, some input into this consultation period ahead of the Royal Commission, how can they... How can, can families and loved ones do that? Thanks, Kieran. We, we will move very quickly. As you're aware, the announcement was made by the Prime Minister a bit over an hour and a half ago now. We will establish uh, a website and email address within the Department of Veterans Affairs to allow uh, individual veterans, uh, family members, serving men and women, ex-service organisations to make contributions, uh, have input in the terms of, terms of reference uh, directly uh, to that office. So we will have the, the broad themes published uh, within the next 24 hours, the broad themes of the terms of reference, and invite that feedback from the ex-serving community and others. Was this uh, announcement interested around Australia. rushed so, to, an, to an extent? If you, if you don't have that already up and running, is, was this rushed out there or for some reason? What, why, why wouldn't those emails and feedback mechanisms already be in place? Uh, no, it's not rushed, Kieran. I, I understand the point you're making. The, the email address and the website uh, have been established. I just don't have right in front of me the exact time frame when they go live, so I was buying myself 24 hours. Okay. So you've caught All me right. out there, Kieran. I apologise. It'll, it'll go, it will go live very soon. But my, po my point I'm making is the, 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 the themes for the terms of reference have been developed. We don't want to preempt. Uh, the views of the ex-serving community. So we're going to present those themes in a way that they then have input and can shape them to make sure this Royal Commission achieves what they're hoping to achieve. And as I said in my very first comments, this is an opportunity to unite our serving community. I want to take this consultation period uh, very seriously. I want to have the opportunity to meet with veterans and their families and serving men and women and give them their chance to have their say directly to me or through the virtual means. And so I don't want to uh, preempt any of those findings. Okay. But that, that, in, that information on the email address and the website will be made available very quickly.
Minister for Veterans Affairs, Darren Chester, we appreciate your time. We'll talk to you on Anzac Day this Sunday. Thanks for that. Now, if you or someone you know in the defence community needs support, please reach out to one of the organisations on your screen, including Open Arms, the Defence Family Helpline or Lifeline.